you know, chipping all day can be kind of boring. So a lot of times while I'm chipping, I'm keeping my eyes open for perfect walking sticks. And I found this one the other day. This is from Purple Leaf Plum, which often shows out a nice long straight shoot. And you can see how it was growing. And I cut it off. And this part is reasonably straight. But what was really cool is I cut it in such a way that the location on the top here, let me switch hands, is really a good fit for your hand. And I'm uh, over six feet tall. Used to be 6'4". I think I'm about 6'2 now as I'm getting older, damn it. But I don't need this yet. But I like a good walking stick. But this is more of a cane. And I tell you, the grip for my right hand is perfect. I'm going to sand this up and make it really, really smooth on the top. And I like to leave a few of the rough bits, you know, so people know that it's handmade. The nice thing about a longer walking stick like this is if I give it to someone or sell it to someone that is a little bit shorter, they can always modify it by taking a little bit off the end and making it fit them just perfect. This one, with my arms straight on the ground, is absolutely perfect. Now, it's a lot of work to make one of these. It's also a lot of effort to find a perfect stick. And if any of you have watched my past videos, you know that I build walking sticks. I've given away dozens and dozens of them to, you know, especially some of my older clients who, you know, may need a little assistance but don't like the look of a aluminum cane. Something a little bit uh, more tough if you've got what's known as a walking stick or a walking staff that means that you're more of a hiker so i still got a long ways to go on this stick and my shop is a mess always a mess but i'm always working and you know i'm always looking for cool things now isn't that a great hat rack or a coat rack all i have to do is put a little slot in the back put it on a peg sit it there I think that's really cool. That's my drone. Let's see what else do I got. There's a real basic one, very simple, but still really cool. I like it. And you can put a little nail on the top, maybe make it a uh, you know combination hat rack, coat rack, and key holder. You know, if I use like an old old world nail. Now that just was cool because that's a peeled over or sealed over section of tree and I cut it flat and you even see the old decay on the pot. I thought it'd be kind of cool to put like a little shelf on top here. Maybe a few uh, cut nails on there. That could also be a key holder and a, a little gadget shelf maybe for your iPhone or whatever. Oh this is cool. I like this. Every once in a while I will find a real oddball piece of wood and I thought, now if I make a rustic cabin in the woods, is that a cool door handle? I love it. I just, I, you know, but you got to keep your eyes open for these things. How about this? Picture frame. <laughs> oh, here's another cool door handle. Cut the holes for this one already. And it can go just like that. Of course, it's not going to go on a stovepipe. It will go on a flat wall. But it can be screwed in nice and tight and sealed up. If you had a real classic rustic door, I think that could be really, really cool. You know, I'm always collecting little oddball things. There's another possible picture frame. I was splitting wood one day and I split it in half and it revealed this old horseshoe that was nailed to this piece of wood. And I just had to save that. I thought that was so cool. Anyway, got to pay attention to the stuff in the woods and you'll find things of interest. Maybe not for everybody, but even a branch like that. You know, with that kind of a keyhole router bit, you can put the, the uh, screw in there and it goes up and locks. So it could go on a wall, flat on a, on a wall, go into place, lock into place, and you've got a really nice coat rack or a hat rack.
Here's a little workbench I built for my kids about 20 years ago. Still holding up. There's a chunk of ash. I turned the uh, the feet. I turned them down and I drilled holes and drove it in and leveled it. Put little screws in here. Had old screws. They're long lost. Had a little hammer. Give me a little vise that they can put it in there and had a little tiny saw. This was, this was for when they were about six or older. This little guy over here, this one's for a two-year-old. Never start him too young, I say. <laughs> and that's my little maker's mark that I put on a lot of my projects. It's a little feather that I've put on with my Dremel tool.